Hello, everyone. Welcome to my The Young and the Restless Homies official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Today on The Young and Restless Tracy tries to get Diane to reconsider. Claire advises Kyle and Nikki is concerned that Jack will abandon his plan. Jack sits at the Abbott estate, looking at his wedding photos, till Nikki comes. She's heard that his marriage is in trouble. He does not believe it can be salvaged. Breakups are difficult. She is concerned that he will return to using drugs to relieve his discomfort. She lists everything that is going wrong in his life. He promises her he would not succumb to medications. She would feel better if they attended a meeting. Jackie sedately agrees to phone his sponsor today. She vows to be there for him in case he needs her. If she means it, he wants her to persuade Victor to pull his claws out of Kyle. She doesn't understand what he means. He explains that Victor is Glissade's hidden investor who pressured him to steal from the corporation. This is all about the mustache taking revenge on him for what happened in the hotel room. Jack is certain that Victor is using his kit to carry out a vendetta. He describes all of his disagreements with his son, as well as his feelings of betrayal. Nikki believes her husband's involvement in this was despicable. Jack assures her she is not to fault. She is shocked that Victor has turned his sacrifice for her against him. Jack claims he warned Victor not to come after his family. He better be prepared for revenge. Claire joins Kyle in the park and tells him about dropping Harrison off at his birthday party. When it turned out that it was not a costume party, she was forced to face the agony of the other children. She encourages him to open up after noticing how distressed he is. He reminds her of his parents' public dispute. Things just get worse. She's now out at Jabo, and the marriage is over. She had them all persuaded she returned for the right reasons, but they were all mistaken. He says she came back for money and power. Claire understands his want to pretend his mother had changed. She understands why he was wounded when his mother fired him. He says it was worse. His mother prioritized her goals over him and his father. She was his childhood best buddy. Claire is certain she loved him and something positive can come of this. She notes that it sounds like he's empathizing with his father. Maybe this is their chance to begin to heal. He confesses he spoke with his father, who appeared to want them to reconcile, but he couldn't do so. His pride got in the way. Claire advises that he simply needs time to comprehend everything. Kyle acknowledges that everything seems off. Claire's perspective on the suddenness of this is that she adores him and his father. She wonders if Jack simply misinterpreted her intentions and she confirms his charges defensively. He admits he has done it with his parents. She believes his mother is hurt because she loves him so much. If he can get past the sorrow, they might be able to reconnect as a family. Tracy visits Diane's suite at the GCS. She notices she has a drink out and offers her a profiterole. She hopes that something can be done to repair her relationship with Jack. Diane believes that staying out of the situation is the best thing she can do to help. She's never seen Jack this upset, but he's correct. She returned to Genoa City with an agenda and nearly got away with it. Tracy finds this difficult to believe. She realizes how much she has changed. Diane admits she's tired of pretending to be someone she isn't. She is ambitious. Tracy has witnessed how much she adores her kid in Harrison. She is certain that this is all a hard patch. Why has everything changed so suddenly? Diane appreciates her efforts, but this situation cannot be resolved. The truth is that she is selfish and will no longer apologize for it. Tracy does not believe she should have to apologize for seeking family and career. Diane claims that she is just like Victor and is tired of acting otherwise. It is up to Jack and Kyle to accept that her love for them and ambition are compatible. Diane assures Tracy that she deserves to be happy. Tracy says she does, too. Tracy returns home and informs her brother that she went to see Diane. He wished she hadn't. She felt she could help.
He claims that Nikki also wants to help. His sister claims they despise seeing him in misery, regardless of how many issues they have with Diane. She acknowledges she failed. Diane feels angry, hurt, and righteous. She believes Diane has ceased caring about everyone except herself. Chance arrested Daniel in the GSAC foyer. Phyllis loses her cool and yells, accusing him of railroading her son. Kristen enters and declares that she is there to represent Daniel. Phyllis squints at her. Phyllis is certain that Christine will put her son in the electric chair. Daniel called her. The lawyer urges Phyllis to stop up and assures him that he will go before lunch. Has everyone lost their mind? Phyllis asks. After the cop brings Daniel away, Phyllis tells Christine that she will not allow her to ruin her son's life. The lawyer doesn't have time for this. They argue, and Phyllis urges her to apply her abilities on someone else's child or go back to throwing underwear at Danny. Christine encourages her to see logic and insists on saving her son. After she walks out, Phyllis phones someone and says she needs to see them right away. It's a question of life or death. Moments later, this is all over the local news. Michael comes and Phyllis begins to complain about her son hiring a incompetent boob. He can guess who she is referring to. The lawyer says that Daniel has the freedom to choose his own counsel, and Christine is a great lawyer. Phyllis is certain that Christine despises her enough to throw this case. He claims she is being paranoid. Michael reminds her of Christine's feelings toward Daniel's father. He understands that she is terrified, but this is not helping her son. He offers to keep an eye on things and intervene if he believes something is going wrong. She explains that she believes Sharon is framing her son. Her mother's intuition is guiding her. He claims that is not acceptable in court. Phyllis reminds him of Sharon's hatred for Daniel, and she has been out of control for weeks. Chance cannot see it. Therefore, she must find a method to open his eyes. Her companion dislikes the sound of that. He advises her not to falsify any proof. She believes she is incapable of doing something like that. Besides, she doesn't have to. Sharon has been framing her son and is willing to go to any length to prove it. Daniel is processed at the GCD. Victor is horrified when Nikki bursts into his office and demands to know if he is the investor behind Blissade, who hired Kyle to get revenge on Jack. He asked her to keep away from Jackson. She claims that is not his choice. They argue about it. She tells him how much her friend is hurting. He mocks it and always wipes his eyes with a handkerchief. He tells her that her debauchery with Jack almost killed her, and he vows to make him pay for it. She can't believe how difficult he's being. I don't need you to comfort him. Why don't you move in with him? He shouts. She rolled her eyes. When she leaves... Victor contacts Diane. She hopes he will help her punish Jack. He's extremely interested. Good, because I want payback and I don't care who I have to hurt to make that happen. She tells me. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. If you like my videos, please like and subscribe for more information. I'll see you guys next time.